whenever I go past the thrift store, I always gotta just drop in because you never know what's gonna turn up. And I had to go down and abort Ma's loom a couple of days ago. Well, maybe a week ago. <laughs> I lose track of time. And when I was down there, I swung into a thrift store and I picked up a few things. You know, stuff that I really I wasn't actively looking for, but if you run across it, you think, oh, that's a good deal. And it's funny, because <laughs> uh, I had actually been kind of looking for a chair. Well, here they had this old rocker, and it's really, it's, it's pretty nice. You know, it's a pretty nice chair, and it's the right, you know, like when you're sitting in it, it's the right height for your arms. You know what I'm thinking? Oh, this would be excellent for reading. You know, wood stove right here. I've got a bay window over here with a shelf that a lamp would fit on. So it's a perfect setup, you know, because you leave your coffee cup on the edge of the stove, keeps it warm. During the day, the light comes in from the window, perfect for reading. At night, the lamp would be in a, you know, it's. I got just a spot for it, and it was kind of, I was actually going to make a chair, but I got so many projects going on. Well, I run across this one for $9.99, which was a pretty good deal, though it has its problems, but the problems with this one. Yeah, it's got a good seat, and it's good, you know, heavy springs. But there's two slats broken out of the back. One wide one in the center, and one narrow one here, just like there is here. But it's oak. And the good part is the slats, although they're gone, they didn't break out you know, you always got to worry about breaking the wood out, you know, like here. Uh, this one, there's still the end of the wood stuck in it, so I got to cut that out of there. But as long as this part isn't split out, you know, the slats is not a big deal. And I think, I'm pretty sure I can cut them and then warp them and pop them in there. The hardest part will actually be getting that end piece out of there. You know, because that's broke off flush. So depending on how severely that's glued in there, that could be a problem. But see, nice, heavy made. And the seat, <laughs> you even got a leather holder in there. You know, it's been recovered. I could almost bet underneath this cover is the original leather, because I'm sure it would have had a leather seat on it originally. But I like it. You know, it's a good rocker. Well made, so I'm going to rebuild that. And I have some oak. Well, I got a lot of oak. All I can see is oak. But this has been laying around for a long time. I have been using just a chunk off a of board that I have been testing out some of that paint on. You know, seeing what kind of penetration I get, which is pretty good with that ochre and pine tar. Now it might be a bit of a trick. I don't think there's any stain on this. But to get the wood dark enough to match up, though I'm not particularly fussy, and even here, you know, it's lighter here than it is here, so it's not a big deal. And normally in a situation like this, I, I have a blanket over the chair anyway. It keeps draft from the back. So, I think that'll work out. 
caught it when I monkey around and plane this down to the thickness that I need. And then look for the nicest looking green. Which this has got some nice green on it. So I think that'll work out. But I'll go at that sometime today. Well, I got the job accomplished. You know, the slats were easy enough to make. And the way these are designed, you know, there's a slot down at the bottom. And it's shouldered on the back side. This is the spare one I made because, you know, I was thinking, you know, as long as I'm set up making them, I wanted to... Uh, <laughs> have it extra in case something went wrong in the installing them because you know to get this piece in there you know it had to go under them shoulders but it had to be warped well green oak warps this stuff is pretty hard but what I did was to steam them and then I put it in on the top, put one of them long Jorgensen clamps down to the bottom, and I had, you know, it was hot yet, and I had rags wrapped around it so it wouldn't cool down. Then I started cranking on that clamp, and that bowed it back enough to where when it got up to this point, then I just tapped her with a hammer, she popped right in. <laughs> you know, I'd like to have, have videoed it, but it was a nerve-wracking operation. I should hang on to this one, just if I need a spare, but I can't see. You know, they're pretty tough. I don't know how they broke them out of there. You know, you'd almost have to put the chair down and jump on it. Because this one was sheared off. But I lucked out in that it was not glued. These aren't glued in there. They're just stuck in there. So the little stub end that was in there, drove in at an angle with a chisel, popped it right out in one piece. So that worked good. Now I, before I steamed it, I soaked it with pine tar and turpentine. That's why it's this color. That kind of worked that in as it was steaming. And now I'm gonna let this dry out and then I'll give another coat and I'll think about it uh, I, I do have some kind of stain or it's a it's actually a spar varnish that's a little dark but what I'm going to do first I'm going to put more pine tar on it and then I'll heat it and if you heat it it darkens up but I'll just have to heat it carefully so I won't use my big blowtorch, I'll use my little one. And I should be able to do it without peeling off the varnish that's on here. And then once that pine tar is burnt in, then I'll put some spar varnish over the top because the rest of it is varnished. But like here you can see where the varnish is worn. You know, it's almost to the color of that, but it's better than this color. But that should serve me very well for many years. It's a Fine chair for $9.99.